Grammar and words is next. And by that, each accent is different to, now do I say different to or different from? Do I say, I'm, am I gonna have a shower or take a shower? Now those are minutia of grammatics. Grammatics, is that a word? I don't know, <laughs> grammatical minutia. If I'm from another country, where they're used to structuring things grammatically like this, and then I'm trying to learn English, and it's structured, you know, that way, <laughs> because it's English, um, I might, when I'm trying to learn it and I'm tr concentrating on the words, it might end up being back in the structure, the grammatical structure that I understand, that I remember, which is why things often get switched in English when we're listening to foreign speakers. So if you're studying a foreign language accent, the more you can learn about that language, the more you'll understand why certain things would be substituted. Um, yeah. So, and then for the actual meaning of the words, um, you know, if I say, would you like some pudding? Do I mean like jello instant chocolate pudding? Or do I mean, would you like some dessert? You know, pudding. Um, or if you go to Australia and you're looking for a liquor store, you won't find one until you go to a, you know, a bottle of it. Or if, if you want a drugstore, you won't find a drugstore until you go to a chemist. You know? so, um, so knowing the different words that that different people use. I mean, and, and even just within the US, people use different words to mean different things, you know. So paying attention to that. If you're fascinated by that, start there. So we have pronunciation of consonants and vowels, the melody of the line, the rhythm and stress, the grammar and word meaning, and then the fifth category, I call the vibe. Because you can't separate out the way a person speaks or a character speaks from the person, you know. I don't just speak the way I speak. I, speech is an expression of who I am, who I, I think I am, who I want you to think I am, how I feel, you know, all of that. So it's, um, you know, there's part of an attitude, there's part of the times, the zeitgeist of the times. If you look at um, you know, if I'm an announcer in the 1930s and I, and I have to speak into a microphone that has a very limited pitch range, fidelity range, you know, then I better speak in this sort of pattern. And it has to be sharp and clear if you want to understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Or if you look at films from the 1970s, um, Dog Day Afternoon or Saturday Night Fever, they aren't just accents, New York accents. Their New York accents at that particular time from those particular characters and how they're feeling. Yeah? So there was a, a, an attitude in the 1970s that doesn't exist anymore. Or the 1930s or, or the 40s or the 90s, you know? It doesn't exist anymore. So it's constantly changing. And you can't separate out the way a person is moving and feeling and expressing and talking from, you know, if I'm talking, if, you, if, you, if this is the most fascinating thing to you, you could be looking at how certain, you know, which different muscles I need to tense, how, my, how I'm moving, you know, try somebody on. You're looking down the street and you see this person and you think, how do they, you know, get into it, try it out. Try it out. And consider your source as well. Because the difference between when it sounds like someone is putting on an accent and where, it, where it's authentic, it feels authentic, is if the emphasis for them is on how they sound and it's separate from how they feel and who they are, then it won't ever feel true. But if it is centered in the truth of this person, and how they feel and what they're thinking, then even if it's bizarre, you know, we've all met someone who we couldn't believe 
that was their BU accent, but it it was. You know, I'll never forget, I'm in a man who actually talk like this, and I have no idea what he said, because the whole time I was thinking, you exist. I, I couldn't believe it. He would never open his mouth. His jaw was really just tight like that. He had his snifter of brandy, and I went, oh my god. It was amazing. But he was a real person, you know. So, study people. Be fascinated. And choose the thing that is the most fascinating to you. Start there and, and move on from there. It takes thousands of hours. It's not going to happen overnight. You can start overnight, and you'll get better, and you'll get better, and you'll get better. But practice, practice, practice. Record it. Listen to your recordings. Show them to other people. If you can grab an authentic speaker of the accent that you want to learn and have them work with you, sit down and work with you, that's a really good thing, you know, because they can, they can tell you whether or not it sounds true or, or you know. Um, but really, it's just about you honing your own skills and you learning from a place of what you are interested in and expanding from there. So, all the best in your pursuits. Remember, we've got um, be fascinated, pay attention and observe, analyze, break it down, practice, 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 rehearse, pay attention to your rehearsing. Don't just go off and rehearse and then forget to check back in your source because you can end up somewhere else in some other thing that you've been practicing really hard, but it could be totally wrong. Remember the vibe. All the best in everything you do.